Before we move on to the regular part of this lecture, let us take a look of the following interesting problem. So here, this problem is about permutation. We let pi to be a certain permutation. Now, given the permutation pi, we can have a graphical representation of pi. So we can represent this pi by using a directed graph. And this graph has exactly n vertices, and the vertices are labeled by 1, 2, 3, up to n. So we will create a directed edge from j to k if pi of j is equal to k. So let's take a look of an example. So suppose that this permutation, so pi of 1 is equal to 2, pi of 2 is equal to 1, and so on and so forth. Then in this case, Based on this permutation, we can draw the following graph. The graph has five vertices. Because pi of 1 is equal to 2, we are going to draw an arrow from 1 to 2. And pi of 2 is equal to 1, we are going to draw an arrow back to 1. And similarly, pi 3 is 4, so 3 will draw an arrow to 4. Pi 4 is equal to 5, 4 will draw an arrow to 5. And, and finally, 5 will draw an arrow to 3. Now, so it is easy to see that because this is a permutation, so for each particular number, there will be exactly one arrow going out from this number. And also, there will be exactly one arrow coming into the number. So in such a case, the graph, the graph that we draw here, will be actually formed by a lot of directed cycles. So here we have one cycle, and then here we have another cycle. So there are two directed cycles here in this example. So, so now, what is the question? The question here is, suppose that we are looking at a random permutation. So we assume that each of the permutation, each of these n factorial permutations, will be equally likely to be chosen. And in such a case, then, then we will have different number of cycles for different permutations. So we want to ask, what is the expected number of cycles that we, we, we will see? So in the previous example, is 2. The minimum number of cycles will be 1. We can link all the vertices into one cycle. And then the maximum number of cycles will be equal to n, because for each number, then, then it can point back to itself. So it is the identity permutation. So, so we want to analyze what is the expected number of the cycles that we will see. Now we are going to talk about this using two different methods. So for the first method, we are going to define suitable random variables to help us. So, so here, for a particular vertex v, if it is a part of a length k cycle, we say that this vertex v will contribute a value of 1 over k. And then the number of cycles will be equal to the contribution of all vertices. So it may, be, it may not be very easy to see what it means, but then it is a very natural idea. So let's take a, take a, take a look of, an, of the following example. So here, this is a two cycle. So we are going to say that for each vertex, Inside this two cycle, they will contribute a value of 1 over 2. So by adding their contributions, we will have 1. So in that case, it will count this cycle. And similarly, it is a 3 cycle, it is a length 3 cycle. So in such a case, we say that each vertex here will contribute a value of 1 over 3 because it is of length 3. Now by adding their corresponding contributions, it will add up to 1. So in that case, we will have another cycle f uh, represented by the sum of the contributions. So in that case, the total contribution of all the vertices must be equal to the number of cycles in, 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 this, in, this, in this graph representation. Okay, now, how does this help us? Okay, so, so now for a vertex V, we would define x of v to be the contribution of this vertex v. So the contribution could be equal to 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, up to 1 over n. And then we can calculate that 
the chance that the contribution is 1, which means that vertex v will be in a 1 cycle is exactly 1 over n, because among all the possible permutations, there will be 1 over n chance for, for the vertex v to point back to itself, so it is 1 over n. And similarly, we can calculate what is the chance that the contribution of v is equal to 1 over 2. This is the same as what is the chance that v will be inside a length 2 cycle. Now, so for v to be inside the length 2 cycle, v must be pointing at some other vertex other than itself. And then, so this has a chance of n, n minus 1 over n. But then for that vertex, it has to point back to v to close the cycle. Now the chance for that case is okay, is equal to 1 over n minus 1. Notice that it is not 1 over n, it is 1 over n minus 1. Because, because the vertex, that vertex itself, is already pointed by v. So, so whatever it can point to, it must be some other vertices that, that is not being pointed before. So there are only n minus 1 vertices remaining. So in that case, it is 1 over n minus 1. So after doing some simplification, we will see that this is also equal to 1 over n. And in fact, we can go on with the same process and show that for each of these different values, 1, 1 over 2 up to 1 over n, the chance for xv to be this value is always the same. It is always equal to 1 over n. So in that case, then we can now calculate what is the expected contribution of a vertex. Okay, so the expected contribution of a vertex will be equal to 1 over n chance that it has a contribution 1, 1 over n chance it has a contribution 1 over 2, and so on and so forth. So, so this right-hand side value is h of n. So the expected contribution will be h of n divided by n. So this divided by n comes from this 1 over n. And then by linearity of expectation, the total contribution will be equal to the expected of total contribution will be equal to the sum of the expected value of each contribution. But then all of them are independent of which vertex we are talking about. It is always hn divided by n. So because we have n vertices, total contribution will be equal to h of n divided by n multiplied by n. So it is equal to hn. And total contribution is the number of cycles. So this is the first proof, method 1. Now we can also uh, solve this problem using a different method. This time, let us use the conditional expectation formula to help us. So here, we are going to study permutations from permutation with just one number, and then permutation with exactly two numbers, and so on and so forth. So we want to find out, okay, what is the number of cycles uh, in an n permutation in general? So we let y of n to be the number of cycles for an n permutation. For y1, where n is equal to 1, then, then there is no, 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 no uncertainty. There is no, it is always, the, the vertex is always going to point back to itself. So y of 1 is always equal to 1. And then, so it, because y of 1 is equal to 1, then expected of y of 1, of, of course, it will be equal to 1. There is no, no other cases, so it is always equal to 1. But interestingly, the expected value of y of 1 can now be written using the conditional expectation formula as follows. Okay, so we divide the, the scenario, all possible scenario, into two cases. The first case is pi of n is equal to n, so that means that the vertex n is pointing back to itself, and then the other case is the vertex n is not pointing back to itself. We are going to compute the conditional expectation for each of these cases, and then we weight them by the probability of each of these cases to occur. So this is the conditional expectation formula. Okay, so let us see how we can we can find out each of these numbers okay okay now expected of y of n so the first part here is this is the expected value of y of n given that 
n points back to itself. Now, because n points back to itself, that means that we will have one cycle due to this vertex n pointing back to itself. And then for the remaining, they are just it's going to be a, a permutation of the remaining n minus one numbers. So the number of cycles that they will form will be y of n minus one. So linearity of expectation gives us that the expected value of y of n given n points back to itself is this term. And then each, this this value should be weighted by the chance that n points back to itself. So it is one over n. Now, for the other case, suppose that n does not point back to itself, then in that case, n must be pointing into some somebody, and then we can see that n is just like it disappeared because it is now going to be merged with with the with with the vertex that it is pointing into. So essentially, the graph will now have only n minus one vertices left. And in such a case, the expected number of cycles will be equal to expected of y of n minus 1. And this expected value should be weighted by the chance that n does not point back to itself. So it is 1 minus 1 over n. Now we can do some simplification. After doing some simplification, because we have e of y n minus 1, it is multiplied by 1 over n, and it is also multiplied by 1 minus 1 over n. So there will be exactly one perfect copy of e of y n minus 1. And the remaining part is this 1 times 1 over n, so we have a plus 1 over n. Now we have a super nice formula. So we will see that e of y n is equal to e of y n minus 1 plus 1 over n. This is holding for any n. So when n is equal to 2, then we get that this is expected of y of 1 plus 1 over 2. And for e of y of 3, it is expected of y over 2 plus 1 over 3. So if we observe this pattern, then we will see that expected of y of n will be equal to h of n. So this is the end of this uh, interesting problem.